Welcome to the Quick Pro Camera Guide for the Sony A7R. This is a great camera that will capture amazing images as well as HD video. We hope you'll enjoy learning more about it with this guide. This guide is meant to be a study tool to be used in connection with and not a replacement of your camera's owner's manual. You can watch it entirely in one sitting or by chapter. Let's get started. Your Sony A7R has many sophisticated buttons and dials, and to take the best pictures with your camera, you'll want to be familiar with the functions of each of them. Let's begin with a brief overview of many of the camera's buttons and features. Many of the things we'll discuss in this chapter are discussed in greater detail later in this guide. First, there is the shutter button and power switch. To take a picture, simply rotate the switch to the on position. Press and hold the shutter button halfway down for a moment, allow the camera to focus, and press it the rest of the way down to take the picture. This is the front dial. Rotating the front dial will allow you to adjust exposure and other camera settings. This is the custom one button, which can be assigned to one of almost 50 different options in the custom settings menu. By default, the custom one button is set to provide immediate access to the camera's focus settings. This is the exposure compensation dial. In the camera's program auto, aperture priority, shutter priority, and sweep panorama modes, you can rotate this dial to adjust the overall brightness of the image. This is the mode dial, which allows you to select the camera's shooting mode. The A7R has a variety of shooting modes ranging from completely automatic to unique and creative as well as advanced shooting modes that will allow you to take full control of the camera. We'll discuss each of the camera's shooting modes in Chapter 3 of this guide. This is the multi-interface shoe, which will allow you to attach a variety of Sony accessories to the camera. This is the built-in microphone. Take care not to cover the microphone during movie recording. This is the speaker, which plays sound in movie playback. Now let's take a look at this side of the camera. These are the terminal covers, where you'll find terminals that will allow you to connect the camera to other devices. This is the microphone jack, which will allow you to connect the external microphone to the camera. This is the headphone jack where you can connect headphones to the camera to monitor sound during movie recording and playback. This is the multi-terminal, where you can connect the camera via USB to a computer and other devices, as well as charge the camera's battery. To charge the battery, simply connect the supplied AC adapter to the camera using the USB cable. This is the HDMI terminal, which will allow you to connect the camera to an HDTV. On this side of the camera, we'll find the lens release button. When you want to remove a lens, press the lens release button while holding the camera with the same hand, and then with the other hand, rotate the lens until it uncouples. To attach a lens, make sure that the camera is switched to off, hold the camera with one hand and the lens with the other like this, align the lens's index with the camera's index, then gently rotate the lens until it clicks into place. Take great care not to scratch the lens by allowing it to make contact with anything. When you need to clean your lens, it's a good idea to use a lens cloth. Other fabrics can dull or scratch your lens. Avoid changing lenses in windy or dusty conditions. This will help the image sensor stay clean and free of dust. Also on this side of the camera, there is the NFC mark, which indicates the touch point for connecting the camera to an NFC-enabled smartphone. This is the movie button. Press this button to begin movie recording in any of the camera shooting modes and press it again to end recording. Here is the memory card slot cover. Your Sony a7R can use many different SD memory cards as well as a variety of Memory Stick Pro Duo memory cards. Consult your owner's manual for a complete list of compatible memory cards. The type of card you're using will determine the direction that the contact should face. Be careful not to force the card. If it doesn't click into place easily, check to see that you've positioned it correctly. Note that forcing the card can cause damage to the camera and the card. Before you start taking pictures with a new memory card, it's a good idea to format it. 
Also keep in mind that your camera will operate faster if you periodically format your memory card rather than simply deleting images from it to free up space for more picture taking. Make sure that you don't format your card unless you've already copied the images that you want to save to your computer. Formatting your card will erase all the images. To format the memory card, press the menu button and use the control wheel to scroll to the fifth setup menu. Here, select format. The camera will ask you to confirm that you'd like to format the memory card. Select enter and press the center button to confirm. Now let's take a look at the back of the camera. The most prominent feature is the large, tiltable LCD monitor. When tilting the LCD monitor, note that it will pivot and tilt in specific directions, and forcing the monitor in a direction other than intended may cause damage. This monitor serves several purposes. First, it provides you with a full-time live view of the scene. Next, it displays the images that have been taken in the playback mode. Using the camera's control wheel, you can scroll through the images on the memory card. The LCD also provides fast and easy access to the camera's menu system in all of the shooting settings. This is the menu button, which provides access to the camera's sophisticated menu system. This is the electronic viewfinder and eye sensor. When the viewfinder is brought close to the face, the eye sensor will automatically switch the view from the LCD monitor to the electronic viewfinder. This is the diopter adjustment dial. Before you start taking pictures using the viewfinder, you can rotate this dial until the icons in the viewfinder are in sharp focus. This is the custom two button, which can be assigned to one of almost 50 different options in the custom settings menu. By default, the custom two button is set to provide immediate access to the camera's focus mode. In the playback mode, the custom 2 button functions as the playback enlarge button. This is the rear dial, which will allow you to adjust exposure settings and other camera functions. In the playback mode, the rear dial serves as the image index dial. This is the AF-MF AEL lever, which will allow you to choose the function of the button. When the switch is set to AF-MF, you can press and hold this button to temporarily switch to manual focus. When the switch is set to AEL, or auto exposure lock, you can press this button when you're taking pictures into the sun or near a window to ensure that the subject will not be too dark or too bright. This is the function button, which provides access to 12 different camera settings. You can select which 12 functions that you'd like this button to provide access for in the custom settings menu. This button also serves as the send to smartphone button when the camera is connected wirelessly to a smartphone. This is the control wheel, which is used for a variety of functions ranging from navigating the menu system to scrolling through images in playback. The top, bottom, and sides of the control wheel also have dedicated functions. The top of the control wheel serves as the display contents button. Each time this button is pressed, a different set of shooting information will be displayed on the LCD monitor. At the top of the default display screen, you'll see several helpful icons, including the number of shots remaining and the battery indicator. The left side of the control wheel allows fast and easy access to the camera's drive mode settings, where you can choose from settings like single shooting, continuous, self-timer, and bracketing. The right side of the control wheel can be pressed to access the camera's white balance settings. The bottom of the control wheel can be customized to access one of almost 50 different options in the custom settings menu. This is the playback button, which allows you to view the images and movies that have been recorded on the camera's memory card. This is the custom three button, which can be assigned to a variety of settings in the custom menu. The custom three button also serves as the delete button in the camera's playback mode. Your Sony a7R can record image files in two different file types, RAW and JPEG. Both file types have benefits and drawbacks to consider. Let's talk a little about these two image file types. 
There are several important things to know about raw files. First, they are not actually image files. They're actually the raw data saved to the memory card directly from the image sensor. Next, raw files are uncompressed, meaning that the file sizes are considerably larger than those of compressed files. Raw files have a much broader range of tones. Shadow and highlight areas have more detail than JPEG files. Also, you can make extensive edits to a raw file without losing data or image quality. And finally, raw files appear flatter, with less color and contrast, and must be processed on the computer before they're printed. JPEG files, however, are very different from RAW files. JPEG files are a standard image file format that can be read by any image software. They are compressed, which means that not all of the image data is actually saved. Because they're compressed, JPEGs are much smaller in file size. JPEGs have a more narrow range of shadows and highlights and will lose some image data each time they're edited. Finally, JPEG files are processed by your camera and are able to be printed directly from the memory card. Because JPEG images require less time when editing on the computer, I use a high quality JPEG setting for everyday picture taking and snapshots. If I know ahead of time that I'm going to be extensively editing my images, I'll choose the RAW plus JPEG format. Let's take a look now at how to choose the image size and quality settings on the A7R. First, we'll press the menu button and make sure that we're in the first camera settings menu, indicated by a camera icon with the number one underlined. The top option, image size, is where you can choose the number of megapixels you'd like the camera to use when recording images. The first option, large, will use all 36 megapixels. The second option, medium, will use 15 megapixels. And the last option, small, will record the images using 9 megapixels. Unless I know that I'll only be using the images for email or posting online, I like to keep the camera set to the large 36 megapixel setting. Below the image size option, there is also the aspect ratio with two options. First, there is the 3-2 option. This is the size that you would like to use if you want to make 4x6 prints of your photos. The next option, 16:9, is the same aspect ratio as a widescreen movie. Use this size if you want your images to match the aspect ratio of a widescreen movie. Let's also take a look at the image quality options. There are four different options. First, there is RAW. With this setting, the camera will record one RAW file. The next option, RAW and JPEG, will record a RAW image file in addition to a JPEG file. There are also three JPEG options, Extra Fine, Fine, and Standard. The difference between the JPEG options is the level of compression. The Extra Fine option will have the least amount of compression and produce a higher quality image. The Standard option will have more compression, slightly lower quality, and smaller file sizes. Your camera features a variety of shooting modes, ranging from fully automatic to completely manual. This gives you a lot of flexibility and creative control over your photos. To choose a shooting mode, simply rotate the mode dial. You can choose from Auto, Scene Selection, Sweep Panorama, Movie, Memory Recall 1 and 2, Manual Exposure, Shutter Priority, Aperture Priority, and Program Auto. Let's discuss the camera's automatic and scene modes now. With each of these modes, the camera will adjust all of the settings for you. All you need to do is point and shoot. There are two automatic modes on the A7R, Superior Auto and Intelligent Auto. With both of these modes, the camera will make adjustments for the brightness and the color of the photo automatically. To choose the auto mode that you'd like to use, make sure that the mode dial is set to auto and press the function button. Here, scroll to Shoot Mode and press the Center button. Use the Control Wheel and the Center button to make your selection. The Superior Auto Mode will automatically reduce blurring and digital noise. Both the Intelligent and Superior Auto Modes will quickly assess the scene 
and then switch to an appropriate scene mode to take the picture. Now let's discuss the camera's scene modes. Rotate the mode dial to scene selection. Rotate the front dial to scroll through the scene modes. You can also press the function button, highlight shoot mode, and rotate the control wheel to make your selection. There is a scene mode available for almost any shooting scenario, including portrait, sports action, macro, landscape, sunset, night scene, handheld twilight, night portrait, and anti-motion blur. When you recognize one of these environments, simply choose from the scene selection menu and the camera will optimize the necessary settings. Let's talk a little about each of these modes. First, there is the portrait mode. This will help you emphasize the subject by blurring the background. It also reproduces soft skin tones. Make sure that you focus on the subject's eyes for the best results. Next is the sports action mode. This shoots fast motion at higher shutter speeds. If you hold down the shutter button, the camera will continue taking pictures one after another until you release the button. This mode works best in well-lit scenes, as insufficient light will not allow fast shutter speeds. The next mode is the macro mode. This is great for close-ups of small subjects that are physically close to the lens. Use this to capture subjects such as flowers and food in clear, sharp focus. When shooting at distances of less than 9 inches, using a macro lens may be necessary. The landscape mode captures the entire range of scenery in sharp focus with vivid color. Shooting with your lens set to wide angle will increase the sense of vastness of the scenery. You'll also want to make sure to keep the camera level when you're shooting landscapes. The sunset mode allows you to vividly and dramatically capture the warm colors of dusk and dawn. This mode is also great for capturing silhouettes. Shutter speeds may be slow in this mode, so you might consider using a tripod. The night scene mode is great for capturing nighttime scenes without losing the dark atmosphere. In this mode, the shutter speed may be slow, and the use of a tripod will help avoid blur due to camera shake. You'll also want to make sure that the camera is level when you're photographing landscapes or similar scenes. The next mode is the handheld twilight mode. With this mode, you can take pictures at night without using a tripod and still get impressive results. Use this mode for stationary subjects or scenes. The handheld twilight mode takes a burst of shots and then combines the shots to create one image with reduced blur, camera shake, and noise. Keep the camera as still as possible during the continuous shooting. Please note that after the shots are taken, there will be a delay while the camera processes and combines the images. The next scene mode is Night Portrait, which is great for capturing images of people in nighttime scenes. In this mode, using an optional flash will ensure that the subject is properly exposed, and the shutter will remain open for a longer period of time to properly expose the background. The Anti-Motion Blur mode will allow you to capture amazingly crisp images in low-light situations. This mode can be used for moving subjects, like the handheld Twilight Scene mode, the camera will take a series of images at very high speed and combine them to create one image with crisp, clear details and low noise. When you use this mode, try to keep the camera steady during continuous shooting. The next shooting mode is the Sweep Panorama mode. To use this mode, simply rotate the mode dial to Sweep Panorama. Now the camera will prompt you to take the shot. Hold the camera steady, press the shutter button halfway down to set focus and exposure, and then press the shutter button the rest of the way down as you slowly move the camera in the direction of the arrow. As you're moving the camera, you will hear it take multiple shots at very high speed. In this mode, it's important to make sure to follow the direction of the arrow and move the camera at a smooth, consistent speed. Otherwise, the camera will be unable to shoot the panorama and will prompt you with an error message. The camera will seamlessly stitch all of the images together to create a single panoramic image. Note that it will take the camera a few moments to process that image. In the sweep panorama mode, you can adjust the overall brightness of the image with exposure compensation by simply rotating the exposure compensation dial. 
Values with a plus sign will make the image brighter, and values with a minus sign will make the image darker. There are a few more things that we should discuss about the sweep panorama mode. The panorama image size and the panorama direction. To make adjustments to these settings, make sure that the sweep panorama mode is selected on the mode dial, and then press the menu button. Select the first camera settings menu and scroll to panorama size. You can select standard or wide. The next menu item is the panorama direction. This is the setting that controls the direction of the arrow when shooting a panorama. You can choose from right, left, up, or down. One of the most important concepts in photography is exposure, or the amount of light that falls on the camera's image sensor. A properly exposed photo will have good detail in the shadow and highlight areas. Photos that are too bright are overexposed, and photos that are too dark are underexposed. The camera determines proper exposure using the metering modes. Note that the metering modes are only available in certain shooting modes. To access the camera's metering modes, Make sure that the shooting mode is set to PASM, one of the memory recall modes, or sweep panorama. To access the metering modes, press the function button and select the metering mode option. Here you can use the control wheel to make your selection. The first metering mode is called multi-segment metering. This is a great general use metering mode that can be used in most shooting scenarios. When this mode is selected, the camera will divide the scene into zones. The camera measures the shadows and highlights in each zone and averages all of the zones. Then the camera uses that average to determine the exposure settings to suit the scene. This is a good mode to use for many situations, but sometimes when the scene is very bright or very dark, you may want to use a different metering mode. The next mode is center weighted metering. Center weighted metering functions much like multi-segment metering with zones being evaluated and averaged, but with center weighted metering, the zones that are in the center area of the frame are given the greatest weight. The zones that are outside of the center area of the frame are taken into account as well, but these zones are given much less priority when determining the exposure. Center weighted metering is a classic mode used for portraits. The last metering mode is spot metering. Spot metering functions in much the same way as center-weighted metering, but spot metering uses only a very small area of the frame to determine proper exposure. Spot metering is a great mode to use when there's a lot of contrast between the background and the subject, when the background is either very bright or very dark. Now that you know a little about how your camera sees and measures light to create properly exposed photos, Let's talk a little about the advanced shooting modes on the A7R. These modes allow you to take the most creative control over your camera's settings, like aperture, shutter speed, ISO, white balance, and a variety of other settings. The first mode we'll discuss is called Program Auto, and it's represented with a P. In this mode, the camera automatically adjusts shutter speed and aperture for optimal exposure. This may seem similar to the Auto modes, but with the Program Auto mode, you have control over the camera's aperture, shutter speed, focus mode, drive mode, and flash settings. To operate in this mode, rotate the mode dial to P. You can monitor exposure settings like the aperture and shutter speed at the bottom of the LCD. Taking a picture in this mode is easy. Simply hold the shutter button halfway down to focus and press the shutter button all the way to take the picture. You may find that the shutter speed is too slow for what you're photographing or that the aperture does not give you the depth of field that you're looking for. If you'd like to change the camera's shutter speed and aperture combination, simply rotate the front dial or the rear dial. If the image is too bright or too dark, you can adjust the exposure compensation by rotating the exposure compensation dial. The next shooting mode is the A or aperture priority mode. The Aperture Priority Mode is useful for times when you want to control the depth of field in an image. Depth of field is the term used to describe the distance between the nearest and farthest objects in a scene that appear acceptably sharp in an image. When only a small area or subject in an image is in focus, it's said to have a shallow depth of field. This effect is achieved by using a smaller f-stop number. 
when everything in both the foreground and background is in focus, an image is said to have a long depth of field. For a long depth of field, choose a large f-stop number. When you're shooting in aperture priority mode, you'll set the aperture and the camera will automatically select the correct shutter speed for proper exposure. To use this mode, rotate the mode dial to A. Rotate the front or rear dial to select the aperture value as you watch the display on the LCD. Press the shutter button halfway to focus and the rest of the way to take the picture. If necessary, rotate the exposure compensation dial to adjust the brightness. The next shooting mode is the S or shutter priority mode. The shutter priority mode is useful for times when you want to control motion in a scene, whether it's freezing action or blurring a moving subject. In this mode, you'll set the shutter speed and the camera will automatically select an appropriate aperture value for proper exposure. To use the camera in shutter priority mode, rotate the mode dial to S. To select the shutter speed, rotate the front or rear dial. The Sony a7R has shutter speeds that range from very slow, 30 full seconds, to very fast, 1 8,000th of a second. You can view the shutter speed and aperture values on the LCD or in the electronic viewfinder. Again, you can use exposure compensation to adjust the image brightness. The next advanced shooting mode is manual or M mode. This mode gives you complete control of the camera. In manual mode, you will set both the shutter speed and aperture to create the exposure. To operate the camera in manual mode, rotate the mode dial to M. To set the shutter speed, rotate the rear dial. To set the aperture, rotate the front dial. To monitor the exposure on the LCD, you'll want to watch the number next to the small MM icon, which indicates how close the image is to a proper exposure. Proper exposure is indicated by a plus minus zero value. You can choose just the right aperture and shutter speed combination for your scene, whether you want to freeze action or create a very shallow depth of field. Make the necessary adjustments to the aperture and shutter speed so that the plus minus value is near zero, then press the shutter button halfway down to focus and the rest of the way down to take the picture. The next advanced shooting modes are the memory recall one and two modes. With these modes, you can register a bank of frequently used settings to one easy to recall mode. To register a bank of settings to one of the memory recall modes, You'll first need to select each of the settings that you'd like to register. Choose the shooting mode, the exposure settings, the white balance, and even the image quality and size settings. Then press the menu button, navigate to the seventh camera settings menu, and select memory. Here you can choose to register your selected settings to one of the memory recall modes. Choose the memory recall mode number that you'd like the settings to be registered to and press the center button to confirm. When you're taking pictures and you'd like to quickly recall those settings, simply rotate the mode dial to the memory recall mode that you've registered. In addition to aperture and shutter speed, the camera's ISO setting will have a significant impact on whether your images are properly exposed. The ISO setting affects the image sensor's sensitivity to light. The higher the number, the less light that is required to properly expose the image sensor. You can either have the camera automatically choose the sensitivity or you can set it manually. The easiest way to set the ISO on the A7R is by simply rotating the control wheel. You can also press the function button and select the ISO setting. Use the control wheel or the front or rear dials to make your selection. There is a multi-frame noise reduction ISO setting, an auto ISO setting, and you can also choose from ISOs ranging from 100 to 25,600. It's a good idea to set the ISO speed to suit the ambient light setting that you're shooting in. When you increase the ISO speed, a higher number for low light, a fast shutter speed can be used to avoid blurry images. Experiment with ISO settings to become more familiar with their range and control. Here's a guide that will help you have a basic idea of what ISO settings to use in various situations. When you're outdoors in full sun, use ISO 100 to 200. In the shade on an overcast day or indoors with lots of window light, use ISO 400. 
ISOs 800 and higher should be used indoors for action shots or in other low light conditions. Keep in mind that a higher ISO setting may introduce noise or grain into your images. To help keep digital noise to a minimum, the Sony a7R has an impressive multi-frame noise reduction ISO option. To choose the ISO setting within the multi-frame noise reduction option, press the right side of the control wheel to access the multi-frame ISO settings. Now simply use the control wheel to select the ISO setting. When this option is used, the camera will take several shots at very high speed and combine them for a final image with significantly reduced noise. Note that it takes the camera a few moments to process the image. Now that we've discussed shooting modes and ISO settings, let's take a minute to talk about the A7R's drive modes. The drive modes determine how many times the shutter releases when the shutter button is pressed. To access the drive modes, press the left side of the control wheel, which is also the drive mode button. You can use the control wheel to select the drive mode you'd like. The first drive mode is single shooting. In this mode, the camera will take one picture each time the shutter button is pressed completely. The next drive mode is continuous shooting. When the camera is set to this drive mode, the camera will continuously take pictures when the shutter button is held down. Next, there is speed priority continuous. When this mode is selected, the camera will take pictures continuously at a very high rate of speed while the shutter button is held down. The next drive mode is the self timer. The self timer has two options for 10 and 2 seconds. Press the side of the control wheel to choose between 10 and 2 seconds. When this drive mode is selected, the camera will take the picture either 10 or 2 seconds after the shutter button is pressed completely. The next drive mode is the continuous self timer. With this drive mode, the camera will take the specified number of shots 10 seconds after the shutter button is pressed completely. You can press the sides of the control wheel to select either three or five shots. The next four drive modes are the camera's bracketing modes. Using these modes, you can take continuous bracketed images, single shot bracketed images, white balance bracketed images, and DRO bracketed images. Let's take a few moments to learn more about the options that are displayed on the camera's LCD monitor. Note that these settings may vary depending on the shooting mode that you have selected. In the default display, several important shooting settings are shown on the bottom of the screen. First, the shutter speed and aperture settings are displayed. Next, there is the exposure compensation indicator and the ISO setting. At the top of the screen, there is the shooting mode, the memory card indicator, the number of still images that can be recorded on the memory card, the aspect ratio, the image size, the image quality, the movie recording mode, the NFC indicator, and the battery indicator. This is the steady shot indicator, and this is the APS-S size capture indicator. Here you see the drive mode, the focus mode, the focus area, face detection, lock on AF, metering mode, white balance setting, derange setting, creative style, and the picture effect. Pressing the top of the control wheel, also the display button, will hide many of the icons. Pressing the top of the control wheel again will bring up the live histogram, which will help you have a basic idea of the tone distribution of the image as you're shooting. Pressing the display button again will activate the four viewfinder display, which will allow you to access many of the settings. Here you will see the shooting mode and exposure settings, as well as the exposure or exposure compensation scale, depending on the shooting mode that is selected. At the bottom of the screen, there is the histogram that shows the overall distribution of the tones in the scene. To access and make adjustments to any of the settings on the right side of the screen, press the function button. Use the control wheel to choose the setting you'd like to make adjustments to. And rotate the control wheel or front dial to make your selection. You can also press the center button to view the options and make your selection.
One of the biggest benefits to owning a Sony E-mount camera is the ability to shoot high quality movies with the creativity offered by a large image sensor, interchangeable lenses, and convenience and portability of a small camera. The conveniently placed one-touch dedicated movie button means that you're always ready to shoot great movies. Hold the camera in both hands to stabilize your video. Make sure the camera is switched to on and frame the image in the LCD. Press the dedicated movie button once to start recording. Notice the REC indicator on the LCD. This indicates that you're capturing video. Press the movie button again to stop recording. To view a movie that you've recorded on the LCD, simply press the playback button and if necessary, use the control wheel to scroll to the movie that you'd like to view. Then press the center button to play the movie on the camera's LCD. To pause movie playback, press the center button again. Press the playback button to exit movie playback. It's helpful to understand a little about movie resolution and movie file formats before you start shooting movies. The movie image size and quality options are available in the camera's first and second camera settings menus. In the first camera settings menu, use the control wheel to select file format. The A7R has two movie recording formats to choose from, AVCHD and MP4. The AVCHD format records movies in full HD resolution, 1920 by 1080. You'll want to choose this format to record the highest resolution movies possible with your camera. AVCHD is an advanced video format ideal for archiving your video and burning to optical discs. You can burn AVCHD to a DVD in the AVCHD format or to a Blu-ray disc, both playable in full HD on a Blu-ray player. To choose the record setting, select the second camera settings menu and record setting. There are five different options. The other file format, MP4, is a good format to choose if you're going to be using the movie files for posting online or viewing on your computer. To choose the record setting, scroll to the second camera settings menu and select record setting. When the MP4 file format is selected, there are two different record settings, 1440 by 1080 and VGA. Choose the 1440 by 1080 option if movie quality is a priority and choose the VGA option if keeping the file size small is a priority. To record sound during movie recording, the A7R has a built-in microphone which will record sound automatically by default. Take care not to cover the microphone during movie recording. If you'd like to turn off sound recording, you can do this through the camera's menu system. In the seventh camera settings menu, navigate to audio recording. Here you can select either on or off. As we've discussed, the Sony A7R has a large LCD monitor where you can review images, adjust menu settings, and adjust shooting settings. Let's discuss the camera's playback options and displays now. To enter playback, simply press the playback button. The images will be displayed on the LCD. You can use the control wheel to scroll through the images and movie files. You can also magnify images on the LCD monitor. This is especially useful when you want to check for good focus in detail areas of the photo. Press the Custom 2 button to activate the zoom. You can rotate the rear dial to adjust the level of zoom, and you can press the top, bottom, and sides of the control wheel to scroll to different areas of the image. To view other images at the same level of magnification, you can rotate the control wheel. Press the Menu button to resume normal playback. As you're scrolling through photos in your camera's playback, you may find some images that you'd like to protect from being accidentally erased. To protect images, enter the camera's menu system and select the second playback menu. Here, scroll to Protect and press the center button to view the options. Choose Multiple Images. Now, all you need to do is scroll through the photos on the memory card. 
When you see an image that you'd like to protect, press the center button to select the image. You can then continue scrolling through the images and select any others that you'd like to protect in the same way. When you're finished selecting images for protection, press the menu button, select OK, and press the center button to confirm. Now, images that have been protected will have a small key icon displayed at the top of the screen. If you find a photo that didn't turn out, you can delete it from your memory card by pressing the delete button. When the delete dialog appears, select delete and press the center button to confirm. Note that once an image is erased, it cannot be recovered. The A7R has different playback displays that will each show different information about the image. Pressing the playback button will take you to the default playback display, where you can view many important settings. At the top left corner, you'll see the memory card and folder icon. This shows the date the image was taken, the aspect ratio, image size and quality. On the top right corner, you'll see the battery indicator. This is the NFC indicator. At the bottom of the screen, there is the date that the image was recorded, the time the image was recorded, and the file number out of the total number of images. Also at the bottom of the screen are the shooting settings that were used to record the image, including the shutter speed, aperture, and ISO setting. Pressing the display button will bring up the histogram display. Here you will see the same information at the top and bottom of the screen that was in the previous display. In addition to that information, you will see the shooting mode, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, exposure compensation, metering mode, focal length, creative style, white balance, and dynamic range optimizer setting. If there are areas of the image that are too bright and lost detail, those areas of the image will blink in black. If there are areas that are too dark and have lost detail, those areas will blink in white. On the right side of the screen, you will see the histograms. The top histogram shows the information for the whole image, and there are also histograms for each color channel. The histogram gives a basic idea of the tone distribution of an image. In most cases, a properly exposed photo will have data distributed over the whole graph or in the center of the graph. The final playback screen can be shown by pressing the display button again. This view is simply a full screen image. One of the important principles for taking a great picture is image sharpness. Image sharpness is affected by several things, including lens focus, camera shake, depth of field, and digital noise. The Sony a7R has a sophisticated autofocus system with a variety of autofocus modes and areas that when used well together will help you get great focus regardless of what type of subject you're photographing. Let's discuss the autofocus modes that are available on the A7R. Note that autofocus modes are available only when the camera is set to the PASM or sweep panorama modes. To access the camera's focus modes, make sure that the shooting mode is set to PASM or sweep panorama. Then press the custom 2 button to quickly access the focus mode options. Use the control wheel to make your selection and press the center button to confirm. You can choose from AFS or single shot AF, AFC or continuous AF, DMF or direct manual focus, and MF or manual focus. When you're choosing the focus mode, the main thing you'll want to think about is whether or not the subject is in motion. With each of the autofocus modes, you can focus by pressing the shutter button halfway down. When focus is achieved, the AF point that achieved focus will flash in green and the focus indicator will appear at the bottom left corner of the LCD. The first focus mode is AFS or single shot AF and is best suited for stationary subjects. Choose this mode when you're photographing objects or when you're doing portrait work with an older child or adult. The AFC or continuous AF mode is best for shooting moving subjects and it's for use when the focusing distance keeps changing. 
Use this mode when you're photographing sporting events, small children, or animals. While you hold the shutter button halfway down, the subject will be continuously focused. The next option is DMF, or Direct Manual Focus. When DMF is selected, focus will be achieved using Auto Focus first, then you have the option to Fine Tune using Manual Focus. In order to use this mode, press the shutter button halfway down to achieve Auto Focus, then while continuing to hold the shutter button halfway, adjust the Manual Focus ring on the lens with your free hand to make Manual Focus adjustments. When the image is focused, simply press the shutter button the rest of the way down to take the picture. In addition to the camera's autofocus modes, you'll also want to be familiar with the autofocus areas. The autofocus areas can be changed when the camera is set to the PAS or M shooting modes. To select an autofocus area, press the custom 1 button and rotate the control wheel to make your selection. First, there is Wide. This setting will automatically focus on a wider range of the screen. This is great for general use picture taking. Next, there is Zone. With this option, you will simply select one of the zones of the focus areas, and the camera will automatically select the focus area from that zone. To select the zone you'd like the camera to use, you can rotate the front or rear dials, or you can press the top, bottom, or sides of the control wheel. To quickly place the zone at the center of the screen, press the Delete button. The next focus area option is Center. When this option is selected, the camera will exclusively use the center AF point for focus. The last autofocus area is Flexible Spot. With Flexible Spot, you can choose exactly which part of the image you'd like the camera to focus on. This is useful when you want to direct the camera to focus on a specific area of the frame. You can rotate the control wheel to choose from small, medium, or large for the size of the focus area. To position the focus area at the desired area of the frame, rotate the front or rear dials, or press the top, bottom, or sides of the control wheel. Let's take a minute to discuss the A7R's unique lock-on AF feature which will keep focusing on a moving object while tracking it. To use Lock on AF, press the Menu button and navigate to the fifth camera settings menu. Here, select Lock on AF and On. Now, align the target frame with the subject to be tracked and press the Center button. As the subject moves, the target frame will continue to track it and maintain focus. Now, simply press the Shutter button to take the picture. The Sony a7R has unique features called Smile Shutter and Face Detection that will help you capture photos of people in sharp focus. These features can be accessed in the fifth camera settings menu. Here, scroll to Smile Face Detection. The first option is Face Detection Off, which will disable this feature. Next, there is Face Detection Registered Faces, which will give priority for focusing to faces that you have registered. Next, there is Face Detection On. With this option, the camera will simply detect and focus on faces that are in the scene without giving priority to registered faces. To register a face for Registered Faces option, enter the menu system and scroll to the fifth Custom Settings menu. Here, select Face Registration select New Registration. Now, fill the white frame with the face that you'd like registered and press the shutter button completely to take the picture. When prompted, select Enter and press the Center button to confirm. Now, that face will be given priority when you're using face detection with registered faces. Another useful feature when you're photographing people is Smile Shutter. With Smile Shutter, the camera will recognize a smiling face and take the picture all without you pressing the shutter button. To use Smile Shutter, enter the fifth camera settings menu and select Smile Face Detection. Scroll to the Smile Shutter setting, which has three different options. You can use the sides of the control wheel to choose the level of smile you'd like the camera to recognize. 
You can choose from normal smile, big smile, or slight smile. Let's talk about some of the other considerations when you're trying to take crisp and sharp images. Sometimes a photo may have poor focus, but it's not related to the camera's focus mode or focus area mode. Camera shake happens when the camera moves while the shutter is open. This exposes the image sensor while the camera is moving and results in blurry images. Always try to steady the camera. Holding it with two hands and pressing the viewfinder gently against your face will help. You can also lean against something or use a tripod, a monopod, or even a bean bag to steady the camera. You can also reduce the effective camera shake by selecting a fast shutter speed. This reduces the amount of time the image sensor is exposed to shaky conditions. A helpful rule of thumb is to set your shutter speed to one over the focal length. Confusing? Let me explain. If the focal length of your lens is 300 millimeters, for example, you should set your shutter speed to at least 1 300th of a second. If the focal length is 30 millimeters, you might be able to use a shutter speed as low as 1 30th of a second. The Sony a7R also has a unique handheld twilight and anti-motion blur mode that will help reduce the effect of camera shake. These modes were discussed in Chapter 3 of this guide. Let's take a look at the A7R's sophisticated menu system. Note that depending on the shooting settings that are selected, different menu items may appear grayed out or unavailable. Many of the settings are discussed in greater detail in other chapters of this guide. We'll just look at an overview of the menu items in this chapter. The first menus are the camera settings menus, indicated by a camera icon. In the first camera settings menu, the first item is image size, followed by image aspect ratio. You can change the aspect ratio to either 3.2 or 16.9. If you're planning on making standard 4x6 prints of your images, you'll want to keep the aspect ratio at 3.2. Next, there is the image quality setting, followed by the panorama size and direction options for the sweep panorama mode. The file format option will allow you to choose whether you'd like to record movies in AVCHD or MP4. The second camera settings menu begins with record setting, where you can choose the movie recording size, frame rate, and scanning method. The next two options are drive mode and flash mode, which will simply allow you to choose those settings. Next, there is flash compensation where you can adjust the overall brightness for an optional flash. Next, there is red eye reduction. When enabled, red eye reduction will lessen the appearance of red eyes in images where the flash is used. Next, there is focus mode, where you can choose the camera's focus mode. The third camera settings menu begins with focus area, where you can simply select the focus area. Next, there is focus settings, where you can access the settings for the focus area modes. Next, there is AF illuminator, which can be set to auto or off. When it's set to auto, the AF illuminator will provide light for a dimly lit subject to aid focusing. Next, there is exposure compensation, which will allow you to adjust the overall brightness of the image. Next, there is Exposure Step, where you can choose whether you'd like the exposure settings to be displayed in one-half or one-third step increments. The next item is ISO, which will simply allow you to select the ISO setting. The fourth camera settings menu includes Metering Mode, White Balance, DRO Auto HDR, Creative Style, and Picture Effect. Each menu item simply allows you to choose the setting for that option. Next, there is Zoom, which allows you to set the Zoom Scale for Clear Image Zoom and Digital Zoom. The fifth camera settings menu begins with Focus Magnifier, which will enlarge the image before the picture is taken so you can check for good focus in detail areas. Next, there is Long Exposure Noise Reduction, which allows you to select the noise reduction for shots with very slow shutter speeds. Next, there is High ISO Noise Reduction, 
which will allow you to select the level of noise reduction for images shot with high ISO settings. The next menu item is Lock on AF, which allows you to enable or disable the Lock on AF feature. Next, there is Smile Shutter and Face Detection where you can enable or disable these camera features, as well as select the mode you'd like to use for smile shutter and face detection. The next option is soft skin effect, which will smooth the skin in photos of people. You can choose from low, mid, or high settings. The sixth camera settings menu begins with auto object framing, which will analyze the scene and record a second image that has been cropped for a more impressive composition. Next, there is Auto Mode, which will allow you to choose between the superior and intelligent auto modes when the mode dial is set to Auto. Next, there is Scene Selection, which will simply allow you to choose the Scene Mode when the mode dial is set to Scene Selection. Next, there is Movie, which will allow you to choose the Exposure Mode for Movie Recording when the mode dial is set to Movie. Next, there is Steady Shot. When enabled, Sony Steady Shot can reduce the effect of camera shake in images with slow shutter speeds. Next, there is the color space setting with two options, sRGB and Adobe RGB. Some photographers prefer the sRGB mode as it requires less processing later. Other photographers prefer the Adobe RGB mode as this mode has a wider range of colors making it a preferred option for images that will be extensively processed on the computer. The final camera settings menu begins with Movie Auto Slow Shutter, which will automatically adjust the shutter speed to compensate for the brightness of the environment when you're recording movies. The next menu item is Audio Recording, which will allow you to enable or disable sound recording in movie mode. Next, there is Audio Recording Level, which will allow you to adjust the audio recording level during movie recording. Next, there is Audio Out Timing, with options for Live and Lip Sync. When Live is selected, sound will output without any delay during movie recording. When Lip Sync is selected, the video and audio will output in sync when movie recording. This is a good setting to choose to prevent deviations between the video and audio. The Wind Noise Reduction option will reduce wind noise during movie recording. The next menu item is Memory, which will allow you to register a bank of settings to one of the memory recall modes. The next menu is the Custom Settings menu, which includes six sub-menus. The first item in the first custom settings menu is Zebra, where you can choose how you'd like the camera to show you stripes to help you adjust brightness. Next, there is MF Assist. When enabled, MF Assist will display an enlarged image when you're using manual focus. Next, there is Focus Magnification Time, where you can choose how long you'd like the enlarged image to be displayed. You can choose from 2 seconds, 5 seconds, or no time limit. Next, there is Grid Line, which allows you to select the type of composition grid that can be displayed over the image while shooting. You can choose from Rule of Thirds, Square, or Diagonal plus Square. You can also choose to have the grid disabled. Next, there is Audio Level Display, where you can enable or disable an audio level display on the LCD during movie recording. The Auto Review settings allows you to choose how long you'd like images to be automatically displayed on the LCD after being taken. The second custom settings menu begins with Display Button, which will allow you to choose what information is visible on both the LCD monitor and in the electronic viewfinder. Next, there is Peaking Level. The Peaking Level setting will enhance the outline of in-focus ranges with a specific color. You can choose from high, mid, low, or off. The peaking color sets the color that will be used for the peaking function. Next, there is Exposure Settings Guide, which will allow you to enable or disable the Aperture and Shutter Speed Guide on the LCD. 
The Live View Display option sets whether or not to display the effect of a function on the screen, such as the effect of exposure compensation. Next, there is Pre-AF. When enabled, Pre-AF will automatically focus even before the shutter button is pressed halfway. The third custom settings menu begins with Zoom Setting, where you can choose whether you'd like the camera to use optical zoom only, clear image zoom, or digital zoom. Next, there is iStart AF, which will allow you to choose whether or not you'd like the camera to autofocus when you look through the viewfinder when a compatible lens is attached to the camera. Next, there is Finder Monitor, which determines the method for switching the view between the viewfinder and LCD. Next, there is Release Without Lens, where you can choose whether or not you'd like to allow the shutter to be released if there is not a lens attached. The fourth custom settings menu begins with AF with Shutter. When enabled, AF with Shutter will activate the autofocus when the shutter button is pressed halfway. Next, there is AEL with Shutter. When enabled, AEL with Shutter will activate the auto exposure lock when the shutter button is pressed halfway. The next option is Superior Auto Image Extract, which will automatically extract single images from multi-shot modes when the Superior Auto Mode is used. Next, there is Exposure Compensation Set, which allows you to choose whether the exposure compensation controls the ambient light exposure plus flash or the ambient light exposure only. Next, there is Reset EV Compensation. When Maintain is selected, the exposure value set will be retained when the camera is powered off. If Reset is selected, the exposure value will be set back to zero when the camera is powered off. Bracket Order will allow you to choose the order that bracketed images are recorded. The fifth custom settings menu begins with Face Registration, which allows you to register faces for the camera's face detection feature. Next, there is APS-C Size Capture, where you can choose whether or not you'd like the camera to record images with an APS-C size area. Next, there is AF Micro Adjust, which will allow you to fine tune the autofocus for lenses when you're using an optional lens mount adapter. The final item in the fifth custom settings menu is Lens Compensation, where you can apply shading compensation, chromatic aberration compensation, and distortion compensation depending on the lens attached to the camera. The sixth custom settings menu begins with Function Menu Settings, where you can choose which 12 settings you'd like to be accessible when the function button is pressed. Next, there is Custom Key Settings, where you can customize the role of almost every button on the camera body. Next, there is Dial Setup, where you can choose whether you'd like the front or rear dials to adjust the aperture and shutter speed. The next setting is Dial Exposure Value Compensation, where you can choose to have either the front or rear dial automatically adjust exposure compensation when it's rotated. Movie Button is next. If Always is selected, the Movie button will always begin movie recording, regardless of the shooting mode that is selected. If Movie Mode Only is selected, the Movie button will only begin movie recording when the mode dial is set to Movie. The final item in the Custom Settings menu is Dial Wheel Lock. If Lock is selected, you can temporarily disable the function of the front and rear dials and Control Wheel when the function button is pressed. The next menu is the Wireless menu, which begins with Send to Smartphone and Send to Computer, which will allow you to send images to your smartphone or computer respectively. Next, there is View on TV, which will allow you to connect the camera to a network-enabled TV to view images. Next, there is OneTouch NFC, where you can choose the application you'd like the camera to use when touching an NFC-enabled smartphone to the camera. Airplane mode will disable the wireless communications for the camera. WPS push will allow you to register an access point to the camera. 
The second wireless menu begins with access point settings, which will allow you to manually register your access point. Next, there is edit device name, where you can change the name you'd like the camera to be shown as on other devices. Next, there is display MAC address, which simply displays the MAC address of the camera. Next, there is SSID password reset, which will allow you to reset the SSID and password for the smartphone connection. The final item in the wireless menu is the reset network settings, which will allow you to reset all network settings for the camera. The next menu is the application menu with two items, application list and introduction. Under application list, you'll find the apps that are installed on the camera. First, there is the Play Memories camera apps, which will allow you to download Play Memories apps via the internet. Application management will allow you to sort and remove apps as well as view your account information and Smart Remote Embedded will allow you to operate the camera remotely using a smartphone. The next menu is the Playback menu, which begins with Delete. With this option, you can delete multiple images or you can delete all the images in the selected folder. Next, there is View Mode, which will allow you to choose the folder for image or movie playback. Next, there is Image Index, which will allow you to choose whether you'd like 9 images or 25 images displayed in the Image Index. With Display Rotation, you can choose whether vertical images will be rotated on the LCD during playback. Slideshow will allow you to set up the camera to display a slideshow of images. This is especially useful when the camera is connected to a TV. Next, there is Rotate which will allow you to rotate images in playback. The second playback menu begins with Enlarge Image, which will simply allow you to zoom in on an image in playback. Next, there is 4K Still Image Playback, which will allow you to output 4K still images to a compatible TV when the camera is connected via an HDMI cable. Protect will allow you to protect images from accidental deletion. The final item in the playback menu is Specify Printing, which will allow you to adjust settings for printing images when the camera is connected to a compatible printer. The final menus are the setup menus. The first setup menu begins with Monitor Brightness and Viewfinder Brightness, where you can adjust the overall brightness of the LCD and electronic viewfinder. Note that the brightness of the monitor and viewfinder do not affect the exposure of the final image. Next, there is Finder Color Temperature, which will allow you to adjust the color temperature for the electronic viewfinder. Volume settings will allow you to adjust the volume for movie sound in playback. Next, there is Audio Signals, which will allow you to enable or disable the beep sounds that are heard when the camera auto-focuses or performs other operations. The second setup menu begins with Tile Menu, which allows you to choose between currently displayed list style menu or a graphic style menu display. Next, there is Mode Dial Guide, which allows you to enable or disable the guide that is displayed on the LCD when the mode dial is rotated. Next, there is Delete Confirmation, which allows you to choose whether you'd like Delete to be displayed first or Cancel to be displayed first when the delete button is pressed. Under display quality, you can choose from high and standard. When high is selected, the battery will be depleted more rapidly. Power save start time will allow you to choose how long you'd like the camera to wait before going into power save mode. You can choose from 10 seconds, one minute, two minutes, five minutes, or 30 minutes. The third setup menu begins with cleaning mode which will allow you to automatically clean the image sensor. Demo mode is next, which will allow you to choose whether or not to display a demonstration of movie playback. Demo mode is only available when the camera is connected to an AC adapter. 
The next menu item is Remote Control, which will simply allow you to set up the camera to use an optional remote. Next, there is HDMI Resolution, where you can choose the resolution for output to an HDTV. Next, there is Control for HDMI, which will allow you to operate the camera from a TV remote when the camera is connected via an HDMI cable. HDMI Information Display will allow you to choose whether or not to display information to the TV when the camera is connected via an HDMI cable. The fourth setup menu begins with USB Connection and USB LUN setting, where you can choose how a computer will recognize the camera when it's connected with a USB cable. Language will allow you to choose the language that is used for the menus and displays. Date Time Setup will allow you to set the date and time for the camera's internal clock. Area Setting will allow you to choose the time zone for the camera's internal clock. The fifth setup menu begins with Format, which will allow you to format the memory card. File number will allow you to choose the way that the camera assigns file numbers to the images and movie files. Select recording folder will allow you to choose the folder on the memory card where you'd like the images to be saved. New folder will allow you to create a new folder on the memory card. The folder name will allow you to choose either the standard form or date form for the folder format. Recover Image DB will recover the image database file for movies and still images to enable recording and playback. The sixth setup menu begins with Display Media Information, which will allow you to see the number of still images that are recorded on the memory card, as well as the number of minutes of recorded video. Version will simply display the firmware version that is currently installed on the camera. The final item in the setup menu is setting reset with options for camera settings reset and initialize. Camera settings reset will simply reset the camera settings to default. Initialize will completely restore all camera settings to factory default. The Sony A7R includes many features that will allow you to fine-tune and enhance the color and tone of your images, as well as apply creative effects. In this chapter, we'll discuss white balance, picture effects, dynamic range optimization, and creative styles. White balance is determined by the color temperature of light sources, which is measured in degrees Kelvin. The higher color temperatures in the area of about 7500 Kelvin to 5600 Kelvin are usually found in situations like a sunlit or cloudy day. These shooting situations have more cool blue tones and fewer warm red tones. To compensate for the coolness of the color, the camera will add warm tones to help balance the color temperature. Lower color temperature situations are measured in the area of 3500 Kelvin down to 1900 Kelvin and are found in lighting situations like standard lighting from a tungsten light bulb or candlelight. These types of shooting situations are found on the lower end of the spectrum and produce more warm red tones and fewer cool blue tones. To access the white balance settings, press the right side of the control wheel, then use the control wheel to make your selection. A benefit of the A7R is that you can fine tune the white balance within each setting. To do this, press the right side of the control wheel and then use the front and rear dials or the control wheel to make adjustments to the color. Press the center button to confirm. The first and default setting is auto white balance. Auto white balance will automatically adjust the color temperature setting. The next white balance setting is daylight. Daylight is a great setting for taking pictures in the sunlight. This setting is marked with a sun icon. Use the shade setting when you're taking pictures in the shade. It reduces the bluish tones in the picture. This setting is marked by an icon of a house with shade. Use the cloudy setting when taking pictures on days that are overcast. This is marked with a cloud icon. 
The incandescent setting is used when taking pictures under common light bulbs. This reduces the reddish tones in a picture. This setting is marked with a light bulb icon. The A7R has four different fluorescent light settings that can be used when shooting under different colors of fluorescent lighting that are common today. You can choose from warm white, cool white, day white, and daylight. The next setting is the flash setting. Select this setting when you're using an optional flash. The underwater auto setting is for use when you're using the camera underwater with an optional underwater housing. The color temperature setting will allow you to select the specific color temperature of the light that you're shooting under. Press the right side of the control wheel and use the front dial, rear dial, or control wheel to make your selection. The next three icons are the custom white balance options. Select one of these options when you want to use a custom white balance setting that you have already registered. The last icon is the custom white balance setup option which is used to create the custom white balance setting specific to the lighting conditions that you're shooting in. This is done by taking a picture of a white card or object and then selecting the image for the camera's electronics to reference. To set a custom white balance, select Custom Setup from the white balance options. Make sure the white object fills the small circle at the center of the frame and press the center button to take the white balance reading. The camera will display the color temperature reading on the LCD. Press the center button to resume picture taking. Creative styles are another useful feature on the A7R. Creative styles are an intuitive way for you to tell the camera what levels of sharpness, contrast, saturation, and color tone you'd like for your specific shooting scenario. The camera has six different preset creative styles, and you can make adjustments to settings in each of them. To access the creative styles, press the function button and select the creative style setting. First, there is the standard creative style. This is a good general use creative style. The camera will automatically adjust color tone to fit the scene you're photographing. Images taken with this creative style will appear sharp, vivid, and crisp. The vivid creative style will record images with great saturation and sharpening. Use this creative style for striking images of flowers, greenery, and ocean views. The neutral creative style will capture images with reduced saturation and sharpness. This is a good mode to use if you plan on extensively editing your images later. The clear creative style will capture images with clear tone and is good for use in radiant light. The deep creative style will capture images with deep and dense color. The light creative style will record images with bright color. Use this style for images with simple tones to create images with a light, refreshing feel. The portrait creative style is great for portraits, particularly close-ups. It offers pleasant skin tones and makes the image appear a little softer. The landscape creative style is good for taking pictures of scenery outdoors. This picture style makes the greens and blues in the image more vivid. The sunset creative style is great for capturing vivid colors of sunset scenes. The night scene creative style will capture images with realistic contrast of nighttime scenes. The autumn leaves creative style will capture the beautiful red and orange colors of autumn leaves. The black and white creative style will capture images with smooth black and white gradation. Images taken in this setting cannot be converted to color later. The sepia creative style will capture brown and white images with a classic antique look. Images taken in this setting cannot be converted to color later. There are also six style box creative styles, including standard, vivid, neutral, portrait, landscape, and black and white. The style boxes will allow you to register and save adjustments. All of these creative styles are fully customizable. You can make changes to the contrast, saturation, and sharpness. We'll select one that we'd like to edit and press the right side of the control wheel to view the options. Here we can press the sides of the control wheel or rotate the rear dial to select one of the parameters 
and then rotate the control wheel or front dial to make adjustments to that parameter. Then press the center button to resume picture taking. Your Sony a7R also has picture effects, which are a great way to add creativity to your images. To access the picture effects, make sure that the camera is set to the PAS or M mode. Then enter the fourth camera settings menu and select picture effect. Use the control wheel or front dial to make your selection. The toy camera picture effect will mimic the look of a toy camera photo with shaded corners and pronounced colors. Within the toy camera effect, you can press the sides of the control wheel to choose from normal, cool, warm, green, and magenta effects. The pop color picture effect will create a vivid look that emphasizes the colors in the image. The posterization effects will give your images a high contrast abstract look by emphasizing either the primary colors or black and white tones, depending on the setting that you select when you press the sides of the control wheel. Retro Photo will make your image look aged with sepia colors and faded contrast. The Soft High Key picture effect will create the look of an old photo with soft colors and reduced contrast. There are also partial color picture effects for red, green, blue, and yellow. To choose which color you'd like, press the sides of the control wheel. These picture effects create images that retain the respective color of the effect, but the other colors in the image are converted to black and white. High contrast monochrome will create high contrast black and white images. The soft focus picture effect will create images with a soft lighting effect. When you press the sides of the control wheel, you can set the intensity of the effect to mid, high, or low. The HDR painting effect will take three high-speed shots and combine them to create the look of a painting with enhanced colors and details. Again, you can choose from three levels of intensity using the sides of the control wheel. The rich tone monochrome effect will take three high speed shots and combine them to create black and white images with rich gradation and details. The miniature effect will enhance the subject and considerably blur the background. You can press the sides of the control wheel to choose the area of the frame that will be in focus. You can choose from auto, top, middle horizontal, bottom, right, middle vertical, or left. This effect is best used from above. The watercolor picture effect will capture images that appear to have been painted with watercolors. The illustration picture effect will create images that look like illustrations with pronounced outlines. You can choose the intensity of the effect by pressing the sides of the control wheel. Keep in mind that many of the picture effects will work both for still image capture and movie recording. Your a7R has two great features that will help you retain amazing shadow and highlight details, even in backlight and high contrast lighting, Auto HDR and DRO, or Dynamic Range Optimizer. Let's take a minute to learn about both of these camera features, starting with HDR. HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. It's a technique that's used in photography to create captivating photos of dramatically lit subjects. The HDR effect is created when three differently exposed images are combined to create a single photo that shows a super realistic range of shadows and highlights. Here is how to configure the camera to use the auto HDR setting. First, make sure that the shooting mode is set to PAS or M. Now, press the function button to navigate to the DRO auto HDR setting. Press the center button to view additional options and use the control wheel or front dial to select HDR. Press the sides of the control wheel to adjust the level of variation you'd like in the exposure between the shots that will be used to create the HDR image. If you choose auto, the camera will automatically determine the level of variation between the shots. If you choose one EV, the variation between each shot will be one exposure step, which will make the images have slight variation. If you choose 6EV, 
the images used to create the final HDR will have more variation in exposure. Press the center button to make your selection. Then press the shutter button halfway to focus and the rest of the way to take the picture. Since the camera will be taking three shots at very high speed, it's important to make sure that the camera is steady as possible while the pictures are being taken. After the images are combined, two images will be recorded on the camera's memory card. The first image will have the proper exposure and the second will be the final HDR image. Now let's talk about the Dynamic Range Optimizer, or DRO. This setting is similar to the Auto HDR as it helps you capture rich natural shadow and highlight details in high contrast lighting, but it differs from the Auto HDR in that it captures just one image, so it can be used with moving subjects and it can even be used with continuous shooting. The DRO setting is available when the camera shooting mode is set to PAS or M modes and it's accessed under the same menu option as the Auto HDR. Again, press the function button and scroll to the DRO Auto HDR option. Select the DRO Auto option. Here you can press the sides of the control wheel to adjust the level of optimization that you'd like. The higher the number, the more shadows and highlights will be recovered in the image. Now, simply take the picture. The Sony A7R has a unique feature that will automatically crop an image after it's been taken. This feature is called Auto Object Framing, and it's for use with portraits and some macro photography. With Auto Object Framing, the camera will record the original image as well as a version that has been cropped to bring the emphasis to the primary subject in the frame. To use Auto Object Framing, press the Menu button and navigate to the sixth Camera Settings menu. Here, select Auto Object Framing and Auto. Now, frame the image as you normally would and take the picture. If the camera applies an Auto Framing Crop to the image, you will see a brief crop overlay shown on the LCD during image review. To view the cropped and original versions of the image, press the Playback button. The Sony A7R has a built-in Wi-Fi feature that makes it even more versatile in the way that it can capture and share images. The built-in Wi-Fi will allow you to connect the camera to a computer, smartphone, or tablet and use the Sony Play Memories app to share images or operate the camera remotely. Let's discuss how to configure the camera for wireless operation with a smartphone. You'll first need to make sure that the Sony Play Memories app has been installed on your smartphone. Now, press the Menu button and scroll to the Application menu. Select Application List and Smart Remote Embedded. The camera will prompt you with an SSID and password. For iPhones, go to Settings, Wi-Fi, and select the network for the A7R. When prompted, use the password displayed on the LCD monitor as the password to connect. Once connected, launch the Play Memories app on the smartphone. Now you can tap the camera button on the smartphone to take a picture. You can tap the exposure compensation icon to adjust the overall brightness of the image. If you tap the settings icon, you can access the self timer and other settings for the app. If you tap the image thumbnail at the bottom of the screen, you can access options for that image. If you tap here, you can access options for sharing the image. If you tap the thumbnail icon at the top of the screen, you can view all of the images. And if you tap the camera icon, you can resume picture taking. We hope you've enjoyed learning more about your Sony A7R. We know this new information will give you enough confidence and know-how to take your photography skills to new levels. Remember, you can refer back to any section of this guide at any time. Just select the topics that you want to review from the main menu. Watch for more Quick Pro guides on using newly released cameras. Thanks for watching.